guys. So did you know that G-tubes accidentally get ripped out all the time and sometimes purposely get pulled out by the child or the patient? Well, I sure didn't. Here's a story time. Long story short, Holly's completely fine. So last night, um, Holly had finished her last day feed around eight. Um, I haven't been feeling very well, so I was in the bedroom. So I came out so I could help my husband with the bedtime routine. So I looked at Holly, hi, I'm like, how was your, you know? And I went to grab her. You know, I, I assumed that the attachment was off of her button. Um, so I unclipped the chair and then I went to grab her and then I pulled her out of her chair. And then suddenly, just like a gush of formula, just like sprayed all over me and all over the floor. Uh, so my first thought is, holy shit, I just pulled the attachment out. So I just screamed. I screamed, and then she screamed, and then she was crying, and then I was crying. And then I just started hyperventilating because, holy fuck, is the G button okay? So my husband and I rushed upstairs to find out what had happened, if she was okay, and that's when I saw the blood. I had pulled out the entire G tube. It was just, just clear out of her stomach. You guys, possibly the most traumatic thing that I remember, can remember ever happening. Um, so I just, I started hyperventilating. I was basically catatonic at this point. Um, I was shaking and crying and my husband kept, he, he jumped right into action. Like he was amazing, but I was just, so, um, anyway, so I, was freaking out. And then I don't know how I, I called 911. I was shaking. I called 911. Um, I talked to them and I was kind of crying on the phone and the 911 operator, you know, he didn't really seem alarmed, but I didn't really, you know, I was just freaking out. And then, uh, about 10 minutes later, the, uh, paramedics arrived and they were in Holly's room talking to my husband. And I was just standing at the other side of the room with my back to the wall, staring at the floor. All I could do was just stare at the floor. I, all these terrible thoughts were running through my head. Oh my God, I'm a terrible mom. I can't believe that I hurt my child. Like, holy shit, she's going to need surgery again. We're going to be in the hospital for four more days. This is going to be a, a big deal. And I'm the worst. And just all of these, all of these terrible, terrible, terrible things. <sighs> I, somehow was able to drive us safely to the hospital. Um, and then when we got in there, uh, I found out that it's actually very common. This happens all the time. G tubes come out, they just pop out accidentally. And you know, it, it was such, it's such a frequent occurrence that the doctor that walked in teased me about it. Um, at the time I was still like catatonic. So I just broke down. And then he realized that, oh my God, this is the first time this happened to this woman, whatever. So he was very nice about it afterward. But, um, just, that just goes to show you how common this is. Um, but nobody told me that. So when we were in the hospital with Holly, after she, she had just gotten surgery, nobody told me that this is going to happen and this is what you do. So here I am to tell you guys, if this happens to you, I'm going to run you through what you do in the event that, oh my God, G2 comes out of the belly and this is the first time and you don't know what to do. And the hospital just, you know, they didn't set me up for success. And according to this other tube mom that I, that I know, um, a lot of people are like that. There's a lot of people out there who just aren't set up for success at hospitals and it just, it, it has to stop. I don't know why hospitals don't do more parent education. But anyway, so, um, here it goes. Okay. So, and I'll show you guys with Holly's old G-tube. Here it is. So it looks like this. All right. So let me run you through the steps of what you do in the event that this pops out. So step one, stay calm. Your baby's fine. Stay calm. If they see you freaking out, that's just going to make them freak out. But to be honest, Holly, I don't even think that she was in pain. I think that she just, she screamed and cried at first because it scared her. But then, um, like the paramedics got there and she was smiling at them and, and laughing. So, um, I was catatonic and she was totally fine. Anyway, here it is. Um, and so what, ha what happened? So 
Um, when you get out of the hospital, they'll give you, um, so you're going to get all your boxes of supplies. Um, but then this is kind of a separate thing. They'll give you, it has an extra attachment, um, and then it's got like some syringes in there. The syringe that you want for this is, um, it's a little one. And so you have the G-tube. So let me just show you, um, here, let's see. So when it popped out, it was still inflated like this, right? So the balloon is still inflated and, um, it just popped right out. So what you do when this happens is, uh, so first you want to check, you want to check that the balloon isn't broken. So, um, you can just, you know, get some sterile water, um, sterile water or, um, baby water works too. So you want to inflate it and then deflate it just a couple times just to see if there's any leaks. Um, all right. And then if there is a leak, then you want to, uh, to keep it here, just, you can keep it inflated or deflated, but you want to wrap it up and then you want to bring this and the baby to the ER right away. Okay. So if the, um, if the balloon isn't broken, so if it's still intact, so for mine, um, the doctors and nurses at the ER are actually really surprised. It just like popped out and the balloon is fine. Um, so I don't know how it fit out of the hole. I don't want to think about it or I'll vomit, but, um, anyway, so, um, if it is not broken, so if the balloon's intact, then what you want to do is you want to make sure it's completely deflated, um, completely deflated like this. And then, uh, you should have gotten also, there's some, um, I don't have it here, unfortunately, but, um, these kits will also come with some like jelly stuff. So um, you want to rub some of the jelly around the deflated balloon, and then you want to just stick it back in the hole. What happens is, um, I think after a certain time, so it depends on um, on how how long the babies had the G tube. So for Holly, it's only been a month. So we had about an hour or two an hour and a half before the hole started to like really close up. And that's an even bigger problem. That's, I mean, they would have to, you know, stretch the hole out to like get it back in there. And that's a bigger deal. So you want to make sure that you put this back in um, so that the hole doesn't close. And then you want to immediately take them to urgent care or the ER, right? Because they need to check it. Um, I found out at the hospital or at the, yeah, while we were at the ER, the nurse told me that um, some families will, um, you know, this happens so often. Uh, I didn't know that this happens a lot. So some people will just put it back in and then they'll just reflate it with sterile water and then they'll just keep using it. Um, but you don't want to do that because, you know, they'll find, sometimes they'll find that the G tube is actually inserted into the peritoneum space instead of like the stomach. And so, um, that's that. <laughs> You don't want that. So um, anyway, so you just, you want to put it back in just so that the hole doesn't close and then take them right to the ER. So when you put this back in uh, to their tummy, just make sure that it's a T. Make sure that this is deflated when you put it back in there. If the balloon is intact and you want to put it back in there and then reinflate it, um, don't try to put this in there inflated. I mean, I feel like that's common sense, but you know, I mean, it popped out fully inflated. So I'm sure some people think that they can just like, but yeah, um, don't do that. <laughs> so just the T um, is what the nurse said. So just make sure it's a T. So if the balloon is broken, uh, you don't want to put this back in. Uh, you want to get, um, I mean, I guess you can, I mean, what I mean is you don't want to reflate it with water, right? You just want to put this in there and then just put like gauze or something over it and then take them to your right away. Because then you'll need, um, I mean, in either case, you would need a new one. But um, especially if, you know, if it's broken, right? The balloon's broken. You don't want it leaking into their tummy. So you want to make sure it's fully deflated first. I, I don't know why I wasn't told this, but um, yeah, I <laughs> could have definitely avoided some traumatic, uh, traumatic miss uh, last night. That was not fun at all. Um, at all, at all. Um, that's that. So if a G2 falls out, um, and another thing that I wasn't told at the hospital was, uh, just general maintenance and care for the G2 site. So I will run you guys through that as well.
the G tube button looks like this. And I think that, so we have, uh, Holly has the G button, but I think that, um, whatever goes right into the uh, stomach, um, it'll have this, this is supposed to spin. So this spins in there, right? And so to make sure that there's no, um, scar tissue that attaches to it, you want to just do full 360 degree spins at least twice a day. If you're a mom and you're watching this, um, and you can think of, you know, if you got your ears pierced when you were younger or you have a kid with their ears pierced and they, um, they'll, like, they'll tell you you need to spin the, uh, spin the studs, it's essentially the same thing. So we want to spin this twice a day just to make sure that, um, that it's, that it's good that there's no scar tissue that attaches to it because then it'll get stuck and then, um, not good. So cleaning. So, uh, I can't believe that I wasn't told to the hospital. Like I'm so upset, but, um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I know now and that you guys know, I can tell you guys now too. Anyway, so you want to clean around, around this, um, twice a day as well. Um, and so you can use a Q-tip, um, or if the, if the G-tube is older, if the, if pretty healed up already, then you can use a washcloth. But what you want to do is you want to get rid of all of the, all of the crusties that, that are around it. So what'll happen is, uh, sometimes this leaks, sometimes like stomach acid or whatever will, uh, will kind of seep out, which is normal. It's normal. So if that happens, don't freak out, just like wipe it or put some gauze or whatever, just wipe it up. But, um, when you clean it, you want to make sure that it doesn't dry around there and, and crust because that's, that's not good because it's old and yucky and, and gross. Um, I took Holly to the pediatrician yesterday, not yesterday, um, the day before yesterday. And, uh, which was, we also took her to the ER because of dehydration, but that's a separate thing. Anyway, um, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know, um, but the pediatrician was like looking at it, like, what, um, did anyone teach you how to clean this? And I was like, what? So, yeah, so um, you want to take a Q-tip or a washcloth and just make sure that there's no crusties. Basically, it should look pink. If you let uh, if you let the crusties stay there, after a while, the skin around it starts to look red and inflamed and irritated, and then that's where you could get an infection. Um, luckily, Ollie didn't have an infection. We were able to clean it, you know, um, and then she has a new G-tube button now, so it's perfectly clean. Um, but yeah, so I didn't know that and I didn't know, I don't know why no one told me. Okay. So every, about every few days, you're going to want to check the water level in the balloon. So take that syringe again. And then while it's, I mean, it's, you know, so it's in, in your baby. So the, the nurse or the doctor, the surgeon should tell you, um, how much is in here when they first put it in. So every few days, you'll just want to, you want to pull it out. And I'm putting air in this, but it should be sterile water in here. So you want to pull the water out and see what the level is, um, and then you can put it back in. So the nurse told me that sometimes these, um, I mean, the water will naturally, just some of it will evaporate. So if you find that it's less than it was, um, then you just get some more sterile, sterile water and then add until it's at the right level. Every two to four weeks, you want to change the water completely. So just take sterile water and, you know, you want to... Take the water out and then um, sterile water and then put the water back in, right? And then, all right, and then you're good to go. Oh, um, and before I forget, I also learned a hot tip and I wanted to share it with you guys. So you have this G2 button and you have this attachment and you're supposed to change the attachments out every week, right? Once a week. But what happens if your shipment is late and you don't have another attachment and it's time to change it and there's like gross old formula in there and you just, you don't know what to do. I learned a secret tip. So you have this clamp, right? And here, this is not the usual uh, attachment that I use. So I apologize, but so there's a gunk, pretend there's gunk in here, right? If you clamp it, and then you pull the closed clamp all the way down, it's going to get rid of all of that old stuff. So if pouring scalding hot water through it isn't enough to clean it, if there's still stuff left over, just, just do that. Just pull the closed clamp all the way down and it'll, it'll get rid of all the rest of it. And then, um, just to be extra sure that it's clean, you can run some scalding water through there and then you should be good to go for at least one or two days uh, until that shipment comes in. 
but if it's more than two days and it's still not there, then I would, <laughs> I would start to raise a little help because uh, you need, you need those. So I hope that you guys learned a lot and, um, I'm sorry if, um, any of you were like me and weren't set up for success. Um, so I really hope this video helps.